D-D-D-I-Y. Producer Culture, shout out to Producer Culture. They posted this clip. I'm not sure exactly when this clip was made, but a well-known producer by the name of Buddha Bless the Beat, who I believe is originally from Long Island, New York, and uh, is now based in Atlanta. He kind of is helping all of us to understand what's going on behind the scenes of a lot of this mainstream music and the business of it that is ultimately changing the sound of music. Listen to what he said here. One thing that's flicking up this industry and music today is budget control. Y'all listen to me, budget control. Niggas only pushing this sh through engineers, label people, A&Rs. They only pushing this sh through that they get a percent off of. It ain't about what's best for the project no more. It's about what's, what, what, what this one go for. Get a percent of engineer gonna play that song a hundred times for an artist until it beat it in his head that he need gotta put this on his album. A&R gonna, Drag this producer in a hundred beats in, cause whenever this get placed, he get five to ten percent of it. Like y'all start finna go up the sound, man. Y'all y'all do is, you know what I'm saying? Y'all do is right, man. It's gonna pay off in the long run. You get to keep your jobs and this shit look better when the albums is triple platinum and all that shit. Folks believe you then. Stop fucking shit up. Buddha bless this beat. He's telling you what's happening. I want to start a new movement. I don't care how much traction it gets. I'm going to stand on this. And eventually I'm going to make a clip for this. Keep the suits out the music. Keep the suits out the music. Keep the suits out the music. You ever work a job and have a supervisor that you know has never done the job that you're doing? Come in and try to tell you how to do things. I did one time when I worked at Quiznos. It was my first week there and i was like a chicken with his head cut off i was just trying to make sure i can keep up with the lunch rush and all these different things then the owner comes in you would think that he's pretty well read about what needs to be done in order to run a successful quiznos here's the thing i couldn't tell when he was testing me or when he didn't know what the hell he was talking about case in point he came to me one time and he said this bowl of beans and this marinara can they be mixed together and put into the fridge i was like is this a trick question then it dawned on me, he didn't know, but he was using his authority to make me feel like it was a test. And I told him, no, he said, good job. And that ain't no real question. Your ass just didn't know. This is what I feel like is happening right now. And it's been happening. This is nothing new. This is what I feel like is happening in the music industry. Those decisions that are made outside of the studio by people who have never put fingers on keys, who are only concerned about the bottom line, who don't understand the psychology about why people attach to music, don't even understand why people are passionate about music. When those people have a say in the matter, they put people in the room because it's good for business and not necessarily great for music. Engineer gonna play that song a hundred times for a fucking artist until it beat it in his head that he need gotta put this on his album. A&R gonna drag this producer in a hundred beats in because whenever shit get placed, he get five to ten percent of it. Like what Buddha blessed the beat just said has me thinking how an engineer will aggressively push a sound on an artist so they can get a play that they get a percentage off of. They'll get a producer in there and that producer will play a hundred beats. It's got me thinking a little bit differently about that video we did. You can go check that up up here. That was talking about the producers playing sometimes 50 beats. Do they go through a hundred beats? Not just because the artist is not feeling it, but do they get the grace of a hundred beats being played because somebody else in the room needs this play to go through? And if that's the case, we're forcing the issue for money plays that are not the best decisions for the music. Y'all listen to me. Budget control. Niggas only pushing this sh through engineers, label people, A&Rs. They only pushing this sh through that they get a percent off of. It ain't about what's best for the project no more. It's about what's what, what, what this one go for get a percent of. There might have been a place in time where that model worked. The assembly line of a Motown, the... 90s assembly line of bringing a pop singer in, having songs already written for her by folks who have all of these Grammys who are award winning and they're reliable. Bring the song to the artists, get the stylist for them, and then push them through this assembly line. And you're almost guaranteed to make millions and millions of dollars. That model has been around. Something really interesting is happening with the way that I feel Gen Z is reacting to a lot of this music that is being pushed by these suits who should have no place in the music. Y'all stop fucking up the sound, man. Y'all y'all do is, you know what I'm saying? You know why folks fuck up the sound? Because they don't understand it. They don't care.
the more stories that I hear of the suits that get involved, and they're not always in suits. We just call them suits because they're out of uniform. They don't wear the music the way that we wear it. This is something that I hope us as independent, as DIYers, I hope that you listen to stories like this. And it reminds you of the freedom that you have to work with whom we want to work with, work with what programs you want to work with. Because don't think for a second, this is just specifically about producers and artists and engineers working with each other. You trying to tell me you don't think some of these plug-in companies have a monopoly on studio sessions, have a monopoly on being considered the industry standard? You don't think money plays a role in that? Okay. So now you're dealing with an industry, you're dealing with an ecosystem, you're dealing with a league that makes decisions that are about the bottom line. And for the first time, they're not actually meeting where they need the bottom line to be. They're making all of these very non-musical decisions about what the music should be. And it's backfiring. Here we are now, six months into this year, and there's yet to be a number one album from hip hop. Or a number one song. Actually, at the recording of this, Gunna is projected to be number two on the charts. So still, no number one. Something is shifting. Listeners are asking for something more. When those people who are naturally connected to music because it fills them up with something, feel disconnected from an entire genre that we know, at least on the mainstream level, has influence from people who don't even create the music. When they start rebelling against that, heads start to roll, jobs start to get lost. The artist is gonna always be here. The artist will find a way. If they love what they do, they'll always find a way to go ahead and, and, and push their campaign forward, whether it's independently. I think it's officially time, more so than ever before, because now the idea of winning, I saw somebody say this the other day in one of my, my, my feedback sessions. They were like, you can't be mad at people who are artists who are following other sounds because it's winning. The question I had for him and the question I have for anybody who feels like that today is what is winning? How do we define winning when winning is not the same winning that it was last year, at least for the genre of hip hop? What is winning? And could there be wins that are not necessarily as celebrated as the wins of the mainstream happening in the independent world and the DIY world? And are you willing to pursue those knowing that you're not going to get the same critical acclaim, the same distribution, the same fame and popularity as the things that do get pushed through that ecosystem. Those are some of my thoughts, though. What do y'all think about what Buddha, bless this beat, just said? DIY. DIYers, if you enjoyed this content, make sure that you hit the like button and maybe even consider subscribing. Come on, man. Stop, stop being greedy. Peace. <laughs>